From Nairobi, Kenya, you're listening to the Kuza Podcast, brought to you by kuzaapp.com. Welcome to Kuza Podcast. It's been a minute. We thank you so much for tuning in with us wherever you've been tuning in from. Tunashukuru sana. Karibu sana hapa Nairobi Center. We want to appreciate the work that the Lord is doing. Conversations loading. Today, we are looking at the whole issue of the gospel. And we want to particularly focus on a man-centered gospel. What is all this conversation that we have outside there? You have probably had people telling, pastors telling people, you know, you, you have power to do either this and this. God is, and I think they even song saying, if this thing is going to work for you, just demand, call down the heavens to calm down. Is there a problem with some of these things that we say, oh, what has the experience been? Well, today we want to just try and peel the banana kidogo kidogo and just find out what is all this gospel all about. And so, Tafadali tag with us as you tune in from wherever, make sure you mention to a friend. And even as you begin this uh, session, you definitely want to go to www.kuzaapp.com and see what we have in there for you. Kamakawa, Kamadawa, I have some people here who will help me in the conversations. And Kuna Muzungu Muitu Pale Kachikati, they started off uh, in a very interesting way. There's um, Zungu uh, the Matt Elmo, the Saddam, I'm the very far right, and we have very, 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 very one and only uh, Pastor Justice. Which is fine. Um, you know, so uh, what has been your experience in the fellowship you attend about the gospel? Or what have you been hearing people uh, preaching outside there? What do you hear mostly in most of the sermons that you interact with? Is it mostly about you and you and you and what you can do and do? Or is it mostly about God and God and God and what God has done? Well, the Bible says in First Corinthians chapter 2, Paul says there, as he talks in the Corinthians chapter 2, verse 1 and 2, when I came to you, brothers and sisters, I did not come with the brilliance of words and all things, but he said, I came focusing on something very basic, Jesus Christ and him crucified. And countless times in scripture, gentlemen, we see that the focus of the preachers and the apostles is pretty much Jesus Christ from wherever we want to look at it from, whatever perspective, whatever dimension we may have. We know in scripture that uh, the focus is simple. It's the gospel. And so I just want you guys to help us uh, build this thing out pole pole. And one of the things that I want us to start talking about is the... Um, the, the, the gospel of convenience. So there's a gospel outside here that is mostly all about um, man and what man can receive and what we can get. We all know that we are rarely satisfied. I mean, the reason why you eat tomorrow is because today was not enough. And so uh, just when you thought you were full, you, you need something more. And so what are your thoughts about the convenience gospel, a gospel that's mostly about um, the convenience of man and what are the dangers and what is that all about. So if you can just help, so then we can now build as we look at the wider conversation of the day. Mawazo yonyu ni epi. Okay. Mm-hmm. Uh, for me, what I can say is that, um, you know, uh, with humanity, mm-hmm. of course, what wana nganga inje, people are going through issues. They mm-hmm. have really major issues they are struggling with. Right. And unfortunately, as ministers of the gospel, we have taken advantage of that. Uh, of course, to benefit ourselves, okay. uh, because people are looking for answers to the issues they are struggling with. Right. And so, th- whatever when we fo- when the gospel is centered on them, it becomes very convenient. Uh, unfortunately, uh, what it has done is that uh, we have made the problem of man, you know, become the needs, the desires, you know, those things that we want in this life, those good things that everybody wants. We have made it as if this is the major thing around the gospel uh, so mm-hmm. that um, and this is one of the dangers of this is that this is really building uh, people's faith on sinking sand because when you think of the material things you know as in you never have enough the more you get the more you want to get mm-hmm. and so um so so this has really damaged the faith of many the lives of many okay uh, at the same time of course there are many ministers of the gospel who have benefited as a result and uh, as a result of this, because people are desperately in need. And so as we get to address these issues, as we just focus the gospel to address what these people want to hear, the things that are appealing to them, rather than thinking in terms of a message that is geared towards leading people to honor God more, to love God more, uh, that becomes appealing to people. Mm-hmm. And so eventually okay. they flock in our churches, we benefit, get more sadaka, more tithe, and all that, uh, all right. but the faith of people is built on sinking sand. So when these things mm. don't, uh, when these things don't happen to them, if they don't get cars, if they don't get big houses, 
if they don't have you know sometimes even the healing that they are seeking if they don't experience that what happens is that uh, they see god as a liar and this becomes a problem All right. uh, when we send our gospel that why what, what what why is that dangerous why why is that the, the flimsiness of that kind of message why is it dangerous uh, Matt? why is that dangerous for young people as 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 we seek to grow in fellowships and become members of churches and all these things well i think because I'll come at it from one perspective. The greatest joy we can ever have in our lives is in the Lord. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, like, for example, Psalm 1611 says, You make known to me the path of life, and your presence is the fullness of joy. At your right hand are pleasures forevermore. Mm -hmm. So having a relationship with God and knowing Him and growing closer to Him is... um, the greatest joy anybody could ever experience. But then if we call people to say, you know, like, you know, I'm a pandem begu, I'm a, you know, bring your money, you know, the, the feet of the mitume, and then now, Sasa, you're going to receive a blessing. And then, you know, you're, you're making it about money. You're making it about material possessions. You're making it about this world. And your mind and your heart and your affections are moved towards um, things of this world. And you can't be a friend of the world and a friend of God. You can't be, you can't love money and you can't also love Jesus. And so I think people are missing out on a greater joy. And on top of that, I think we're making them more worldly. Okay. We're calling attention to, um, you know, get as much as you can out of this world and all those things. I think that's why it's such a great evil. Mm-hmm. So, that anything you want to add on what 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 are some dangers of a focus on just what we want? Uh, false security. False security. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, most of the preachers who uh, teach like that, you'll find their churches are filled with poor people and women, and these poor people will go there to you know want money, want success in their lives. And they will always be giving to the pastor uh, because the narrative is if you don't have, it's because you're not giving. If you are giving, it's because you do not have faith. Mm-hmm. And or you're you not, not giving enough. If you are not have, if you are giving and you have faith, you're not giving enough. So the poor will always be exploited. And you see where the security of these poor people is. It's on that man. It's on what they are doing. And so they they take away that the Lord is our refuge and our strength, our present help in times of trouble, mm-hmm. Psalms 46. One. They mm-hmm. take away that they don't see God in that sense. So their security is in the wrong thing, in what they can do, okay. and in the pastor who they go to right. or they listen to. Okay. Yeah. Interesting. Now, um, as we build up on this, I think, what we we have and, and this this a conversation scratching the surface because I know there's a lot more to say about these things. But what we're saying is a focus on ourselves. We all know when you buy a watch today in town, you will, you you'll stay with it, but you definitely would want to buy another one or a shoe. Uh, you buy it and you it's nice, and then you see something else and you want that because we are never really satisfied until we are truly satisfied, and so. One of the things that is dangerous and what we are raising here about that kind of gospel is that, you know, you want to be very careful that uh, even you're by yourself, you realize you do not even have enough as much as you have a lot. If that one, that it really makes sense. You know, it's not enough, even though it's it's a lot. I mean, we have people who have so much money, but they will still swindle and go into crazy um, things of bribery and all those things. So, we want to build up on that one, so that now we we say, okay, fine. There's a problem in this conversation of oh, there's a gospel what one focus to where we sana utapata utapata utapata. And so, I'm probably Saddam. You probably if, if if you can just give us then a perspective of what does it mean for because it messes our relationship. If I think that it's all about what I get, what I get, what I get. It messes mm-hmm. how I look at God and mm-hmm. how I respond to God and how I deduce ministry na voluntary let na mamboza zingine zilo dume teleten. Fanyeza and service church and service malpingine. So, why is it important for us as we look, about, as we look at the gospel to focus on the whole idea that salvation is by grace mm-hmm. so that now we are able to even put these other f- unnecessary focus on us in mm-hmm. its right place? Um, when you're talking about the gospel you're talking about good news 
And good news, there is always an existence of bad news for there to be a good news. And the bad news is that man have sinned and have sinned against a holy God. Mm-hmm. And so the holy God is the one who has beef with man. Okay. So we are in enmity with man, with God rather. Man and God are enemies, Romans 8, 7. And if therefore we are enemies, the question is who, who will save us from this animosity? who will come in between man and God. And that's why we are saying then, then it has to be this great God who comes to save this man. Because man is so weak, how can you fight God? Or even how can you plead with God already whom you have mm-hmm. messed up that relationship mm-hmm, with? Mm-hmm. And so I, 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 I remember first, Second Corinthians 5 verses, uh, 16 onwards. Uh, so from now, Paul is writing, we regard no one from a worldly point of view. Though we, w- we once regarded Christ in this way, we do so no longer. Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, the new creation has come. The old has gone. Mm-hmm. The new is here. All this is from God, who reconciled us to himself through Christ and gave us the ministry of reconciliation. So you see, it is not us doing it. Uh, uh, The good news is that we are not the one doing it. We are not the Mm -hmm. one reconciling ourselves to God. The good news is that God is the one reconciling us, sinful men, Mm -hmm. to himself. And how is he doing that? By sending his son, our Lord Jesus Christ, who died on the cross for our sake. And therefore, for whoever believes in him, uh, we'll have no, we'll have eternal life mm-hmm. and no condemnation. Mm-hmm. And so, um, the the right gospel is that God Himself is the one who is saving sinful enemies of Him and bringing them to Himself. Okay. So that God now becomes the center of this gospel. He is saving us from our sin. Mm-hmm. It is not now us. It is not about what we can do. It's not about who we are. It's not about our age, our social status, or whatever it is. It is about God doing this very work for our sake. So I think so, so basically, is, is, is there a way that um, then a, a preacher or a teacher uh, focusing so much on man, 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 man. You need this. You want this. Yes. You get this. You get this. That, that you, you think it makes less of the grace of God. Yes, it does because mm-hmm. it in Romans we are told, uh, verses f- chapter four, that whatever you work for, that is not a favor. If you work for something and then you are given, for example, you work in a month and then at the end of the month you are you are, you are, you are paid. Mm-hmm. That's a wage. That is payment. Right. But if I come here and I give you 10,000 shillings. That's a favor. You don't deserve it. I, we are in animosity. We, are, we hate each other. And so I give you that. That's a favor. And that's what the grace of God is like. Right. And so okay. Paul, Paul in Romans is basically saying, if you think you can work anything, you can do anything whatsoever mm-hmm. to gain this salvation, then this salvation is not by grace, it's by work. All right. But it, it only becomes by grace if God is the one doing it uh, from start to the end. Okay. Yeah. Well, very interesting, very interesting. Now, as you continue just taking along in this conversation, now we painted a picture um, why it is, what the, all this convenient gospel is all about when you're being told it's all about you, what you do, and then God must do, God must do, God must do for you because you are this and you are this and you must receive. And you're saying, it is a way it dents the, the message of the gospel that is based on salvation by grace alone, uh, you know, and minus the works of the law. And, and Paul says that in, in Romans 3, if you read it. And so you, you you want to have that in your mind somewhere tucked in proper because as Vic is saying, salvation is by grace. Therefore, if we insist that then you can receive these other things the way because you have done other things to God, then it means that it is not grace, it is merit. As you hold on that thought, because I want to engage, um, who do I want to engage right now? Probably uh, just want you to, to engage on something here. I want you to go to your to your, to your, to your phone. If you've not downloaded the Kuza app, Tafazali, you want to check it out. Um, it's green, uh, a tree with the roots in Akakama, Africa. If you download your stuff, and uh, it's free, how to charge anything. Uta get zovu tuzote kuna podcasts, kuna plugs. Jesus is Lord. 
blogs in Uluya blogs um you know um kuna kuna uliza videos na many things that we do so tafadhali enda kwa www.kuzaapp.com download your stuff secondly at www okay hiyo ni website right enda kwa phone iOS store na download hizo vitu kama hujaokoka by the way you want to check out the website on your top right kuna button imani kwa people receive Christ kuna message ya gospel na zasikiza hapo hivyo na utuambie kama umeokoka we want to help you to get a church that is connected right now um just to yes. salvation by grace alone yes now question is sadam amesema tunaokolewa kwa neema peke yake you know not because of works and one of the dangers then of uh, people just saying oh the gospel gospel about Christ alone Christ Mabu. alone ni Jesus ni nani biblia imesema biblia imesema sio sadam sadam ame echo vile biblia imesema <laughs> Okay. Sawa. <laughs> Sadam ameko vile vile amesema. Biblia inasema ni kwa neema pekee yake, basi Sadam amesema. Mm. Now, kuna danger ya mtu kufikiria. So, basi what what was the point? What's the point of me being around? What why do I need? So, is there a place or how do you want to ask this? Does the gospel have a place for God meeting the needs of man so that mse asinde toke sawa si Mungu ajibambe pekee yake? Yeah, actually uh, the far extreme mm-hmm. of a man-centered gospel the opposite far extreme is man neglected gospel okay whereby maybe the gospel neglects the whole issue or uh, the ideas about man uh, the needs of people mm-hmm. but as we look at the bible uh, from genesis chapter 1 verse 26 we see god creating man in his own image and likeness okay showing that man has a special place mm-hmm. Uh, we talk about God using man you know to fulfill his purpose mm-hmm. uh, on earth looking at uh, like Ephesians 2:10 that you know God created there is a good work that God had prepared in advance for us okay. Um, okay. again looking at even the whole motivation even for God saving us mm-hmm. we are talking about his love mm-hmm. for the world and even for humanity right as per John 3:16 mm-hmm. and, and you know the bible telling us in Romans 8:31 all that 34 talking about God is for us and graciously gives us all the things mm-hmm. that we need mm-hmm. so i think Um, there is a place of course in the gospel for the needs of humanity okay uh, the challenge becomes when that becomes the center but the bible looking at christ himself in matthew mm. chapter 6 from verse 25 he acknowledges the human needs he says that therefore i tell you do not worry about your life what you will eat or drink all about your body what you will wear is not life more than food and the body more than clothes and uh, of course in the context of it, it tells us about the birds tells us that he, he knows our needs mm-hmm. you know, he knows our needs and uh, the the focus of course leading us to that uh, verse 34 that you know we are familiar with about seeking first the kingdom and all these other things the other things mentioned are those in terms of our basic needs you know right. those things that we need mentioned up there about our clothing you know our meals our about our health all those things mentioned from verse 25 onwards that god will add them mm-hmm. to us okay. so so there is a part for the human needs and god addressing our issues mm-hmm. uh, in the gospel uh, he came of course looking at luke 4:18 you know that the spirit of the lord you know is upon me he has mm-hmm. anointed me you no know, about preaching the good news to the poor giving sight to the blind right. you know, so that even the issue of health it is also there in the scripture mm-hmm. the challenge becomes when we shift our focus and we only focus on the needs mm-hmm. rather than forgetting that even when all these needs are met uh it's not an end by itself there is a work there is something that god created us for there is a bigger mandate uh, there is what god wants to accomplish in and even through us and that should be the bigger focus Uh, in terms of serving God you know bringing glory to God uh, through whatever engagements that we have in our day to day basis okay. so there is a part for human needs uh, whatever we are going through in our day to day life mm-hmm. the bible has addressed these issues right and so we cannot neglect also the part of uh, the, the needs of man when we are talking about the gospel uh, so that now i mean why um and maybe we can we, we can uh, do this as we do our parting shot in a, in a, in a short while um uh, so that there there is definitely a challenge for the preacher and a challenge for the congregant as well i mean the preacher must make sure kama muhubiri gospel am muhubiri gospel am muhubiri about yesu as the center na vile ata anaweza shughulikia needs za binadamu 
na sio binadamu vile ana, vile yeye ndio the center na Mungu kwa kuvu kumtumikia because i think it's a very interesting balance yes. and maybe it's another conversation yeah. for for another day because there is there is the the thought that Mungu kwa hapo kunifanyia vitu mm-hmm. eh na lazima afanye hizo vitu na kuna watu wanaambiwa hata command the heavens mm-hmm. amrisha mbingu zifanye you know and, 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 and which is very interesting conversation i think Matt, as you, as you respond to what is the god centered gospel therefore because just in a very small way uh, and, and even Saddam and we are not able to have this conversation for long cuz itakuwa conversation ya 2 hours ama 3 hours ama 4 hours so in a, in a very small way we are trying to to raise concerns this is why it is it is dangerous for you to just focus on man 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 and this is what the gospel is because it's, this is what salvation by, by grace is this is why the place of man is so what is the gospel then so then we are able to connect these three dots as we come to uh, at the end of our brief conversation yeah 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 i think the danger in being a man centered gospel in the sense of always talking about the blessings that god brings mm-hmm. right god's going to give you this and god's going to take care of you financially emotionally you know f- all these other things health wise mm-hmm. physically and we start really doing that it seems like then the goal and the blessing of the gospel is the tangible things right you know that blesses me in this world okay whereas when you read the scriptures mm-hmm. the goal and the blessing of the gospel is god himself mm-hmm. for example first peter chapter 3 verse 18 says this for christ also suffered once for sins the righteous for the unrighteous that he might bring us to god Mm-hmm. So we can see in that verse right there the goal and the blessing of the gospel is God himself we get to be brought to God. This mm-hmm. one I mentioned just before in Psalm 16 um, verse 11. Mm-hmm. This is the one in his presence is the fullness of joy at his right hand are the pleasures forevermore. We get to fully enjoy and get to God when we get mm-hmm. to heaven. And I think the point of all this is the fact that we get God is such an amazing overwhelming experience that even the the sufferings and challenges that we go through in this life fail in comparison compared to the glory of God. So let me give you an example in first mm-hmm. we we'll go back yeah. to first Peter chapter 1. All right. Verse 3 it says, "Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ." And I want to say that that verse right there in verse 3, that blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ is is like a big like it's like a shouting thing, right? God is mm-hmm. so good, right? That's kind of the idea behind this even in the Greek. And it says, "According to his great mercy, he has caused us to be born, born again to a living hope to the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead." This is a huge thing for us. Now if you move down into 1 Peter chapter 1 verse 6, he says, "In this you rejoice, though now for a little while if necessary you have been grieved by various trials." And so the thing is, the people that that Peter was writing to, they were going through trials, severe trials. Literally the people were being burned alive in their congregation and people that were suffering greatly, but at the same time they had a blessed God that saved them and it was so amazing and they rejoice in the fact of what he has done so there are light and momentary trials the bible says but they fail in comparison to the glory of god that we get and so i think the problem is if we get so earthly focused and worldly centered in our preaching about all the blessings that comes with this mm-hmm. we miss out on god and just as brought up a great verse i mean matthew 6:33 If I my I seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and all these things that I need for life and living will be added unto me. Mm-hmm. But even in that the seeking first the kingdom of God is I see there's the blessed be the God and savior of our Lord Jesus Christ, mm-hmm. right? And so we focus on that even delight yourself with the Lord and he will give you the desires of your heart. Mm-hmm. I am delighted in the Lord. I mm-hmm. find the him is being so amazing. So I think when we miss out on how glorious God is, how amazing he is and the fact that we get him in, you know, at the end of all things, we miss out really on the heart of the gospel. Okay. Mm. And we become worldly, sinful and useless. Somebody may ask. Um so uh, there's a statement that I, I used to hear growing up um do not be too heavenly minded. If you, if they say, no, what, what did you say? If, if you become too heavenly minded, no you, you have of no earthly good. Because <laughs> that's the narrative that I, I, I see coming in place here. So in, in like in the next like one and a half minutes, because the time is really flying. 
so how do we reconcile some of these realities like this is somebody who's probably thinking i need i need to bribe my way into getting some things i need to be a bit naughty uh, in jesus name so that i can get some things to work faster and then we have believers who are who get themselves in that they are doing a ministry engage something and they say ah you know what we need to we need we need to we need to fuel somebody's and we need to oil somebody's hand so that we can get this thing off because it is urgent i, I mean th- 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 those are realities that and those are things that come to play when i think about the somebody who's probably wondering about some of these uh, realities that we're asking here is the gospel enough for them is it, is it just enough is it satisfactory for us to just think jesus christ and like for instance seek you first the kingdom of god and all this thing shall be added unto you right is it just is, is the seeking seek you first the kingdom enough because what i but i also want these other things i think real quick in the scriptures we see yes. if we love jesus mm-hmm. we will obey his commands all right right and so if i am truly caught up in seeking first the kingdom of god mm-hmm. i am loving him all right and that means i'm also going to be obedient to his commands to work hard mm-hmm. to take care of my family right you know to take care of my and love my neighbor okay. i'm going to do all these things so the idea that i'm too heavenly minded to be any earthly good I think is a false statement it's a false statement because if you take the whole context of scripture in mind I'm going to be obedient to the Lord and do the right things what are we saying at the end of the day give me a parting short summary of this conversation so we've talked about the convenience the, the convenient kind of gospel that the preacher man or people are just given what makes them uh, tickle and makes them feel good uh, but we have the reality of salvation by grace and uh, you know that god still meets our needs and there's a place for god meeting our needs and you no know, matter in a very uh, very 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 simple way i just brought to us an explanation of what the gospel is so give us a parting shot in this conversation my parting shot in this conversation is that uh, Uh, let us appreciate that uh, challenges and human suffering and even the needs mm-hmm. uh, they are part of this life All right. uh, those struggles that we have mm-hmm. but even in them God still glorifies himself you know in all circumstances mm-hmm. and so if your end goal is to escape these challenges as long as we are in this body we are in this earth uh, i can assure you that problems will be there a uh, good measure of them but at the same time there are so many blessings from God So don't look for quick fix mm. solutions because mm. that one will land you in wrong hands and you'll end up being exploited. What about what they listen to just as? If somebody has just been captivated about they they just love hearing being told to tapata tapata tapata. I, I think that is living a lie because uh, um you know you you th- that's the problem that you having because people are hyped up you know emotionally mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. by some of the gospel right uh, or rather the some of the preaching mm-hmm. that we are pre- we are listening to mm-hmm. so it's important to be realistic about your right. life because the bible is really real mm-hmm. even as you look at the individuals that you know that are there in the bible you see they had their own share of troubles while right. on this earth mm. so i think the bible is really is very real so okay. listening to some teachings that are there to hype up your emotions and then you end up you keep struggling and going through these cycles mm. and reaching the pastors the ministers of the gospel so i, I just want you to be real uh become real know that this is part of the challenges but even while in them god has assured us that he will be together with us in all circumstances. Right. Matt, parting shot. What I would just say is, you know, at the end of the day, ask yourself what do you truly love? What do you truly desire? If you love um comfort and if you love peace and you're willing to do anything to get it, um then you're going to be living a life of sin. Mm-hmm. But if you love Jesus with all your heart, your mind, soul and your strength, then even if you go through suffering for the sake of him, you're going to be okay. All right. Get rid of your idols. <laughs> Get rid of your idols. Get rid of your idols. Yes, uh Victor. Um it's a it's a two layer kind of thing. The first layer is salvation and the other layer is um now that I'm saved, therefore that I'm saved. So mtu akianza na na the second layer anakudanganya. Toroke au kanisa, find another place to go. Mm-hmm. The second layer and now if somebody tell you serve nini nini do this do this do this do this but doesn't tell you the first layer that you 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 should do this because of the first layer the first layer is God God wants you to be a Christian God wants you to be his child and he has extended his grace to you through the scriptures to the holy spirit through his son get that by believing in Jesus Christ that is the far important layer mm-hmm. then because of that then you can do these things right yeah 
Well, there you have it for now. I mean, we are basically saying uh, wherever you go to Bible study or fellowship or church or all those things, you want to pay attention in your heart and in your mind that your pastor, your teacher, your Bible study leader is constantly pointing you towards Jesus Christ. He's the one who is the true living water. He's the bread of life. He's the one who truly satisfies. And that if we have him and minus all these things, remember Jesus Christ said, what will it profit a man to gain the whole world and lose his soul? And when you have a preacher or a teacher or a Bible study person who is focusing on all these things, all these other things. Jesus is warning there, what will it profit a man to gain the world? If you have a preacher man who is using the Bible just to help your attention, focus on the world, then there's a problem. Focus on Jesus Christ and all these things will be added unto you. What is the reality? The reality is Jesus Christ is faithful to do part two of Matthew 6, 33. You need to be faithful to do part one because that's your role. Seek you first the kingdom of God. He will do these other things the way he deems fit and so be challenged be encouraged about what you're listening to what gospel you're hearing it's about jesus christ at the center of it all everything else will work okay and even if it shouldn't jesus christ truly satisfies us in this life and the next thank you so much gentlemen for your conversation and your words of wisdom looking forward to other different conversations check out www.kuzaapp.com if you have not visited us please do that leave a comment like the page go to facebook instagram we are there check out on uliza videos and you know just interact with the material there. If you have a new phone and you've not downloaded the app, please go to your iOS uh, app store or your Android app store and download. I think Windows, I'm not even sure. Are we on Windows, by the way? <laughs> Windows platform? In, in no, a well, not, device, not, anymore, not they, anymore. In fact, they've done, Windows has done away with it's it. done away with them. Yeah. All right. It's fantastic. So <laughs> those two places and download the app and let us know what you think about it. In the meantime, take care of yourself. Jesus is Lord. The gospel is enough. God bless you. Baka badai. Thank you for listening to the Kuza Podcast. Brought to you by KuzaApp.com, an online ministry with blogs, videos, podcasts, and a mobile app. Make sure, make, make, make sure to subscribe to get more content to help you grow spiritually.